Hi, everybody. Welcome to Stop Hurting and Start Healing. My name is Gaspar Anastasi, and this is my lovely wife, Michelle. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We are blessed to be with you and uh, share what God's been putting on our hearts every week. Uh, this week, we want to talk about reconciliation, and that's a huge subject. And, of course, the greatest example of reconciliation is Jesus and what he's done yes. for us. And we'll talk about that yes. in a few minutes and get down to individual relationships and and uh, marriages and talk about those personal things and what it takes to really be reconciled uh, to another person. I think it's really a topic that everyone can relate to because, you know, there are, there's always going to be conflicts in life. There's always going to be disappointments. Mm -hmm. and um, Well, God created us to be people of relationship. Yes. And so, therefore, we're going to very easily rub each other the wrong way at times. And, yes. of course, there is a spirit of offense that does come, and that can enhance the separation that we have. But before we get into that, let's talk about our, our Naples uh, church on Friday nights that we're yes. there together with. And uh, it's just great to see uh, a lot of our viewing audience there and, yes. and listening audience uh, to our radio show as well. And it's fun. It's fun to be there. I'm excited about it. Yeah, it's wonderful. We have a great group of people there, and everyone's getting to know each other. It's really, it's and, really And they're really good. hungry for God, and they want more yes. of God in that Naples area. And that's the, the North Naples Middle School yes. off Learning Avenue. Lane. Lane. North Naples. Learning Lane. Learning Lane. I always say Avenue, yeah, for whatever reason. <laughs> that's because I'm a city guy, and I always <laughs> think of cities, you know? But uh, it's a beautiful place, and uh, we're blessed to be there. And, of course, we're here on Sundays in Fort Myers. Yes. Uh, and uh, we invite everyone to come visit us either in Naples, if you're around that area on Friday nights. And in the very near future, we'll be having a Sunday service there as well. And so get connected now. Get on the bottom line. Get on the foundation, and then let God build upon that. And then those of you that are, can come to Fort Myers, and uh, we're here as well on Sundays. Yes. And uh, we're blessed to be able to do both at this point, so we're right. excited about and it. And, of course, we want to say we're not looking to take anyone out of their churches. If no. you have a church that you're happy with, please stay there. Support your church. Um, but we, you know, we really, we've been in the area evangelizing. We're mm -hmm. really looking to win souls. And, uh, and and there are people that are just either not going to church anymore or very, very yes. unhappy uh, with the church that they're at because they're not growing. And those uh, we'd like to attract. But but certainly, if you're committed to a local church, I'm a pastor. I love people to be committed, yes. uh, and that's really key. Let's talk about reconciliation now and uh, talk about you know some of the foundational principles because that is a ministry that God's given to us. Yes. Uh, every one of us, I don't know if you know this, every one of us has been called to the ministry, quote unquote, of reconciliation in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 18, 19, and 20, uh, says that we've been reconciled, and it tells us how that happened, yes. and that now we've been given the ministry of reconciliation. Talk a little bit about what, what it really means. What does it mean to be reconciled? Well, we know that back in the Garden of Eden, God had this wonderful relationship with Adam and Eve, and then because of sin and the fall, um, he already planned ahead of time to send Jesus to reconcile us back to him to pay our debt uh, and that's because that was Jesus's ministry that's the same ministry he's given to us as Christians yeah and so he already knew that man was gonna have a problem yes. and there's gonna be some uh, spirit of offense of course he knew that Satan was there too yes. and that there would be separations with hurt feelings and pride and, uh, and self-righteousness and arrogance and unforgiveness and bitterness and all those things would stir up which would separate uh, people from the unity that, that God intended man to have mm -hmm. uh, before the fall of man. That, so he had a plan. Yes. So, I mean, and we, we have to have a plan, right? We have to have a plan, too. And basically what reconciliation is, is restoring back to, re reconciling back a relationship that has been broken. Yeah, it's like reconciling the books. You know, you, you, you try to find out all the loose ends and find all the mistakes and then try to bring it into so that it makes sense and that it now is accurate. And so reconciling a relationship is bringing uh, two people together at, at, at a cost, because there yes. is a cost. Yes. And uh, having that cost paid and then bringing one in unity and oneness again, where people's hearts can be unified. And there's power in, in, in unity, of course. And that's why Satan works so Definitely. hard against that unity, whether it be a marriage or whether it be uh, children and, and, uh, and parents or just friends with friends. I yes. mean, you know, when that is, when there's a breach there, it really does have a great ripple effect. And, and you know, honey, usually people 
don't want to reconcile and they'll say, well, I'll reconcile when I see some change in that other person, when I see that they're really repentant or sorry or, you know, they just change their attitude or their actions. But yet God didn't do that with us. No, God, God sent Christ to reconcile us with him before we ever changed, before we ever did not want one good thing, before we were ever sorry about anything that we did. So if we see someone in our life that has hurt us and wounded us in ways, um, obviously it's because of sin and the, and the results of sin, yes. and then we have a ministry of reconciliation. In other words, those of us that know better, those of us that have a born-again spirit, mm -hmm we ought to be making the effort by paying the price, yeah. which uh, in the scripture says that we should arm ourselves in the flesh exactly what, what Jesus did. What did he do? He paid the price for us. So we, if we want to reconcile people back into relationship with us or back into the relationship with the local church or back into a relationship with the family, then we have to be willing to be a sacrifice in order for that to happen. Is that true? That's true. And un but unfortunately, <laughs> the thing is, even for Christians, is, is that the natural response is that we don't want to. We want to stay offended. We don't want to uh, let go of it. We don't want to reconcile. Yeah. Well, it's something that you can't do in your own strength. It's only no. through the presence and power of the Holy Spirit living in a born-again nature, born-again person who has the nature of Christ. Yes. In other words, it's inside you, this desire to restore uh, relationships to reconcile uh, but it can't be accomplished within our own thoughts and feelings because those are the kind of things that we think about well I'm not gonna do anything until they change until there's some signs that they're different until they apologize till they right. ask forgiveness etc etc but there is a truth to the fact that that even though you and I make that effort and willing to take that first step take that risk that in order for that true reconciliation to take place the other person does have to repent there has to be a repentance on their end as well. So uh, there can't be true reconciliation without first someone making the first step and then the other person reciprocating by saying, yes, I want that and repenting of whatever issues that they have to deal with. Now, we're going to come back and talk about that in just a few minutes and maybe expound on that a little bit. But I think we want to leave off right now in this segment that everyone has the ministry of reconciliation. You can see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, 18, and 19. And the reason that we do is because we have the Christ-like nature in us. And we have an example that Jesus set. Yes. And so unless we carry our cross daily and deny ourselves, that ministry is never going to be fulfilled. And if anything, that is the major ministry that every one of us ought to have. We're going to come back in just a few minutes and talk about reconciliation. It's not necessarily a popular topic, but it certainly is important to God and important to you and I as a Christian. And, uh, and God's going to hold us accountable to it, whether we're fulfilling our call since we've been created unto good works, and that is a good work. So we'll come right back right after these few announcements, and we praise God because God is going to help us to learn about reconciliation. If you're standing on God's promises today, don't to give up too soon. To God says, don't give up. God's you, promises you have need of patience. are still going to come to pass to break through in your no matter what the circumstances say. Don't give up on the promise. So God will give you the ability to accomplish the task. God's about to open the heavens you, and pour you out a blessing. Don't quit. This dynamic new three CD series from Pastor Anastasi, Don't Quit Too Soon, can be yours for a donation of just $12 to this ministry. Call 274-8881 or go to wolm.net. Every one of us at any one time can fall. We can trip. We could make a mistake, but we don't have to stay fallen. The good news is that God's provided a way for us to get up. Introducing a powerful new three CD series from Pastor Anastasi. You've fallen, now get up. Available in our bookstore and at wolm.net for a donation of just $12. Get it before they're gone. Welcome back, everybody, to Stop Hurting, Start Healing. We're talking about reconciliation, a huge, huge subject, which is so important to every one of us as Christians. And uh, we, we really talked about the, the reconciliation has to start with at least one person who takes the step to follow the example of Jesus and lay down their lives, yes. put their own ideas and thoughts down and their own hurts and wounds and 
really, literally release forgiveness and reach out to that person to bring them back yes. into a relationship that can glorify God. Now, I think you, we were talking a little while ago about Joseph, and that he's a great example of yes, that. Yes, yes. And with his brothers, you know, being uh, offended with him, and because his father, him. yes, they threw him in a pit. And and the thing that's so amazing about Joseph, though, is is that he he kept his eyes on the Lord no matter what he went through. And when he was, um, when his brothers, when he finally did meet up with his brothers, um, he, he had already forgiven them. And, and there was a reconcili reconciliation between them and a restoration. Because already in his heart, right? Already in his heart. It, already in his heart and then extended to them when he saw them because yeah. his, his focus was on the Lord. And I think that's what, in order to get to that place where you want to reconcile with someone, your focus has to be on God. Mm -hmm. and God's plan. Um, otherwise, we have a hardened heart, and we're looking at our own hurts, our own offense, what was done to me. Yeah, it'll never happen. You'll never have it reconciliation. Will never, it will never happen. Well, then. the word forgive means to already in advance make up your yes. mind to forgive. That's forgive means already giving something in, the, in advance. And, uh, and that's the, that's the Christ-like mm -hmm. attitude that every one of us should have. Yeah. Now, we do have that nature in us, but, you know, there is the soulless realm, there's the fleshly realm, there's the, the part that can be very easily offended. Yeah. And the scripture tells us that we need to uh, really be careful about the offended spirit that, that really works yes. tremendously in the body of Christ, causing division. Not just in the church, but also in the family, which is the church. But families, you know, brothers and sisters being offended with one another. <laughs> And uh, there might be someone today that, that is offended by a brother or a sister and uh, is saying, well, I want reconciliation, but I'm waiting for them to make a move. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for them to repent. It doesn't happen that way. I mean, Joseph had already had the process of reconciliation starting in his heart. So that yes. the moment that he saw his brothers, before they even wept and cried and repented, he already forgave them. And so someone has to go first. Jesus went first. He gave yes. his life for us, paid the price for our sins, paving the way for reconciliation so that we can be restored back to divine favor with God. He paid the price for it. Now, yes, we had to receive it, but it was already made available. And I think that's the other aspect of this that, that many people don't realize that they, they need an open door. So if you want to see a brother or a sister or a mother or a father or even a church member being reconciled, you need to pave the way for them by moving in forgiveness, by moving in God's mercy, extending the olive branch, yes. and then letting them now go through that door. And on the other hand, we see in scripture, we see the other side of it with King David's family. Yeah. When um, uh, Amnon raped his half-sister half and David didn't deal with it. And we know that Absalom took an offense ended up killing his brother yeah, that's a good and point. Uh, turning against his father, hating his father for not punishing Amnon. And, and uh, Absalom died a tragic uh, death. It was just such tragedy in that family. Amnon died, died a tragic death. Yeah, there was a Amnon lot of tragedy. Amnon and Absalom too. Yeah. And, uh, and Tamar because yes. she wound up living a life of d total depression and seclusion. Yeah. So her life was destroyed. Yeah, so reconciliation... Uh, if it doesn't happen, is going to can open the door for Satan yes, to really to destroy, destroy not just only a relationship, which is key, but families, but families and, and and friends and churches. I mean, there are churches today that have split over yes. and over and over again because they have never learned how to reconcile. And one of the problems that happens is, uh, and I think this is a, a huge problem, pride, and people get yes. very prideful. Yeah. You know, pride is one of the stumbling blocks to reconciliation. Like, you know, I'm not going first. I'm not going to be the one. You don't understand that they hurt me the most and and, da -da -da -da, and I did nothing. And, and so there becomes a pride factor in that yes. that really becomes a wall. Now, there's some other things that become, you know, stumbling blocks. Uh, I mean, I think one of them is uh, fault finding, right? The, you you yes. wind up looking for fault. In, you're always finding fault in that person. And let's yes. face it, you could always find fault in somebody, Let's you know. And too often we don't look in our own lives because usually what we see in someone else's life we actually see in our own lives too, but we're not yeah. normally seeing it. Yeah, um, dwelling on the other person's mistake. That's a that's a saying huge thing. Saying that you know, expecting them to change and not looking in the ways that you need to change. I wrote I wrote down a few things here. Um, holding on to anger. 
which yeah. we know eventually turns into bitterness, uh, avoiding the person, not even not wanting to hear them. Not that's what Christians do. I think you know. I think it's a, they avoid. So they say, "No, I've dealt with it." You know, but really, what they're doing is avoiding the issue, and they and they go around thinking that they've done it, or making maybe they're deceived. I don't know, or they're trying to deceive other people to think that they look. I've done all I can, right. but I'm not gonna. I don't want to see them. I don't want to talk to them. I don't want to be around them. I don't want to be in the same church with them. I don't. You know, we're avoiding that. And that's a big thing in church, I think. And I think that the biggest lack is not realizing that God could heal any situation, any relationship. They just think it's over, that's it. And um, Yeah. Well, again, you know, there's a, such a deception in the enemy's uh, arsenal that he uses to, uh, to divide and separate. You know, it's, it's such a sad thing. We do a lot of, uh, um, you know, wakes and funerals, and it's so sad to see that on that day when that loved one dies, that everybody's filled with guilt and filled with yes, shame and they wish they could have and they should have. and The things and, they should have said. Oh, the, the things they should have said or should have did and should have reached out and should have been first yes. and should have paved the way. But now it's too late. So now they're living with that, which now is a tormenting thing. Yeah. So, you know, while it's called today, I mean, this is the opportunity to yes. do it. Not only is it the opportunity, it's a call from God. Yes. If you read Second Corinthians 5, 17, 18, 19, and 20, we're Christ's ambassadors. We're representing his kingdom here on this earth. That's our ministry. Yes. And, and again, it's not, everybody's looking for ministry today. You know, I want to be a worship leader. I want to be an usher. I want to be a pastor. I want to be an evangelist. Well, that's great. But in the midst of it all, the bottom line in every one of those ministries is reconciliation. Yes. And that's something that people shy away from. I think it needs to be spoken about more, don't you? Yeah, it's uh, and it's really it's it's the Christ-like way. It's yeah. the Christ-like life, and yet as Christians we make excuses why we don't do it. I think the prodigal father and prodigal son is probably a, one of the yeah. great examples of how reconciliation is accomplished, and we'll talk about that a little later when we come back. But I want to encourage everyone, if you have a loved one or who's maybe not on your love chart anymore <laughs> and uh, you're dealing with these issues, uh, that you don't wait till they die, God forbid, or you die, and then that never takes place. You know, the enemy is really the, 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 the bat where the battle is, not against flesh That's and blood. Right. And you're called to bring reconciliation because you're missing something in your life if you don't allow God to reconcile those relationships. So we're going to come back right after these few announcements, and we'll talk about uh, the prodigal father, I call him, and the prodigal son. The seasons come and go, so if you've lingered in the bitter winter of anger and unforgiveness, it's time to step into the warmth of spring. Pastor Anastasi's brand new book, Stop Hurting, Start Healing, shows you how with a wealth of practical wisdom, plus helpful study guides and prayers to help you start to live again. Get Stop Hurting, Start Healing today for a donation of just $14.99. Call 274-8881 or go to WOLM.net. It's not your money. It's your weapon. It's God's weapon that He gave you. It's about taking your sword and wield it around and, and begin to take down the enemy against your finances, against your health, against the seed that you've sold. Get this amazing new three CD series from Pastor Anastasi called Wage Spiritual Warfare with Your Tithe for a donation of just $12 to Word of Life Ministries. Call 274-8881 or go to WOLM.net because you need to know how to fight this battle. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Stop Hurting, Start Healing. My name is Gaspar Anastasi, my lovely wife, Michelle. And we've been talking about reconciliation, uh, and that is a huge, huge topic that I think is missing in the body of Christ. Yeah. And uh, it, it needs to be at the forefront because it, it is the tool that God uses to overcome the division and strife and discord that Satan places and in. And it's really, honey, it's really the foundation of our relationship with God. Foundation. You know, Christ reconciled us, and now we have to reconcile It's people. a command, by yes. the way. So yes. let's talk about some solutions. And I, I brought up before we uh, ended our last segment about uh, the father. Prodigal, the prodigal father. The prodigal father, prodigal son. Yeah. And he was a good example of reconciliation. The, the, yes. the son, you know, abused the, the, the inheritance and... 
you know, just took off and left the, the father high and dry kind of thing. And, uh, but the father did what? He, he, the first thing he did was already begin to make a move for reconciliation yes. by looking in that direction, yes. by wanting to bring rec reconciliation. So didn't, I, he didn't give up. He didn't give up. He didn't give up on the son, didn't say, all right, that's it. I'm crossing him off the list. He left. He took everything left. Uh, he never quit on him. So he didn't take his telephone number out of his iPhone. Right. He didn't take he it didn't, off the computer. Um, he didn't take him off the Christmas list. He didn't take him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and didn't shop in the same stores, uh, you know, the, he shopped at and that type of stuff. He yeah. was looking for him. He was looking for him. He was praying. He was waiting expectantly, expectantly. for the day he would come and there could be reconciliation. So there the already had to be a forgiveness he in paid his the heart. Price. He, yes. he paid the price by forgiving. In other yeah. words, he forgave everything that he, his son did and said, I forgive you even before the son because came back. Because really that's what's at the root. That's the root cause of a lack of reconciliation is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, Jesus, uh, as the Bible says that, you know, Jesus chose us, we didn't choose him, yeah. which means that he was in his reconciliation on the cross, was pursuing us and letting us know how much he loved us. Yes. And if anybody uh, should be offended, it would have been him because we didn't pay any attention to him. We didn't care about him. We right. served other gods. But yet, in spite of it all, he reached out to us yes. and, uh, and pursued us just like the Father. He was a great example of God. And that's exactly what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be great examples of our Heavenly Father here on this earth. Isn't that what Christ like yes. is all about? But what if, what if people might be thinking, well, what if uh, I try to reconcile with someone and, um, you know, I've tried and they just don't want to have anything to do with me? Well, there's a timing in that. And, and remember that it, the father did that. He went out and started reaching out and paving the way for reconciliation. And the son wasn't looking at all until right. he got so down and out that eventually he looked. So there's a timing on all that. You know, looking at the, our notes here for a moment, the, you know, the heart of reconciliation, what, what are those, what is that uh, character? One of them is humility, you know, yes. being humble. And that's what the yes. father did. I mean, he could have been prideful. We talked about pride being a stomach buck, but he was humble. And uh, he understood, listen, if I've been forgiven so much, who am I not to forgive right. ahead of time what my son has done? That's and then right. paved the way for him to come back. And when that time did come back, well, how did he treat him? He treated him as though he never left. Yeah. The true reconciliation is no longer holding that other person in, in account of what they've right. done. Right. And, uh, and I, he I, didn't talk bad about him. He didn't, talk he bad didn't about try him. to enlist everyone to get on his side and feel right. sorry for him that his son left. He didn't remind everybody of what his son did over right. and over again. Uh, he didn't uh, have a second second class mentality where you right. you sleep in the servants' quarters. I'll take you back, but you can't. You know, no, no. He he brought him right back, put a robe on his yes. back, a ring on his finger, shoes on his feet, yeah. and said, "Go ahead, you act as though you never left." Now that's that's, that's miraculous. That's God's way. That's God's way, yeah. and that takes God to do yes. that. <laughs> yes. But then God's calling us to be that yeah. way. Yeah. Uh, you know, the problem with that is that in today's world, especially in today's church. People will resist that. People will fight against that. People will actually, uh, and Christians now, will actually stand against that. Yeah. And it's really difficult to uh, be Christ-like today in a Christian world. Mm -hmm. because, it, it's true. Yeah, people call themselves Christians, but we're really not Christ-like is a big difference. So I, but, think, I think often if you're at that, you know, that standstill, I think often if it's possible, it's good to bring in a mediator, someone that both parties uh, respect Mm -hmm. That could help uh, open up the lines of communication, help them see mm -hmm. the other person's side. Um, well, in, in this case, it wasn't a matter of what the father's side was. It was a matter of only letting the son know that he was accepted. Mm -hmm. It was interesting. And I think that, that's, that's key. That's, that's humility. When you start to negotiate, it's a matter of like, well, I, I want you to understand what you did to <clears throat> me and how wrong you've been. This has nothing to do with it. This has everything to do with forgiving and understanding forgiveness because you were forgiven and releasing it. I mean, if, if Jesus negotiated with us and said, okay, I, I want you to know I'm going to accept you back, but here's the, here's the deal. You no, know. no, 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 you got me wrong. I'm, I'm talking about godly uh, mediating, like um, Abigail. Yeah. Yes, like Ab Abigail. 
-hmm. when she w was go a go between uh, between Nabal and and David, and trying to make David David see that he was a godly man with a godly call on his life, and that uh, vengeance yeah. don't you know don't kill Nabal. Mm -hmm. um, that will be you know his blood will be on your hands, and and um, it, it, so forgive him of his faults, and and and, that, and, yes. and go ahead and do what true right. reconciliation yes. is about. Yeah, so it helps to wake up people. Yes. to what reconciliation is. But remember that 99% that of the time, it's just one person that has to take that step. I mean, it would be great if both people recognized it, but 99% of the time, it's just the one. Right. And that paves the way, like the father paving the way for the son to come back. Now, so it takes humility. It takes a sense of self-examination. Uh, it takes a risk, risk taking, you know, to be willing to take a risk to do that. Yes. Because you know what? Like if you put your hand out again, you can get slapped again. Yes. And that's a big thing. And, and, and think about how many times that we slapped Jesus mm -hmm. before we eventually accepted him as our Lord and Savior and took the way that he paved. He's the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way to the Father except through him. Think about how many times that we slapped his hand. That's right. But he kept it out there. That's right. Now you say, well, he's God. But you know what? He, he lives inside of us. And the God in us is able to do that. Yeah. So it comes down to a, ma a matter of a choice and a commitment to this walk that God has given to us. That's what makes Christianity so much different than any other religion in the world yeah. because it really deals with unconditional love. You cannot rationalize it. You cannot try to figure it out. It's a matter of being obedient. But in the end, reconciliation will speak for itself. There'll be healing in that. Yes. Uh, there'll be a testimony in that. Uh, and there'll be a release of God's power. Yes. in that you know even as we think of the palestinians and the jews you know there has to be reconciliation in order for that now even though let's say the jews are reaching out and saying hey we want to we want to sit down at the table the palestinians have to be willing to walk the journey so that's when you need a mediator so say okay this is what we need to do so there are times when a mediator is absolutely necessary but bottom line when one recognizes what reconciliation is then they need to pave the way for the other person mm -hmm. So we pray that you will really begin to do that in your life, folks, whether it be a church member that you have been uh, separated from, whether uh, alienated from, whether it be a father, a mother, a, a child, a uh, son or daughter, or whether it be just a good friend, that you would begin to pave the way for reconciliation. And know this, that God is going to be in it. That is his heart. Yes. And his anointing is on that. And uh, you might be ostracized by a number of people in the beginning, especially Christians, but in the end, uh, they're going to see the presence and power of God and a life turned around and a relationship preserved, which will then, remember, what two or three are gathered together, he says, I'm in the midst of you. So it's a very important subject. Again, folks, we'll be uh, at the uh, North Naples Middle School on Friday night, and we hope that you'll come and uh, just kind of fellowship with us. Let us know that you're enjoying this broadcast. And if there's any particular topics you'd like us to speak on, we'd be more than happy to entertain those ideas. Remember that no matter what goes on in your life, God does want you to stop hurting and start yes. healing. You can live a life that is pain-free. Sounds wild, but it's true. And I hope that this is helping you to accomplish that. God bless you. Mm -hmm.